Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's session, Infrastructure and Cloud Security. My name is Sergio, um, I'm a Product Marketing Manager here at Lockpoint, and today I am going to be your host for this webinar about cloud security and how Lockpoint can help in this matter. In this session, we will discuss the challenges that companies face when trying to get more visibility in the infrastructure environment, in their cloud environment to be more precise, and how Lockpoint can help, uh, can help them with this. And here to explain uh, and also to help me explain what Lockpoint can, can do to ease uh, the job of analysts and other security professionals when it comes to cloud security, I have with me my colleague Adrian de Bocher, our senior sales engineer. And uh, he will help you later to understand a bit more how Lockpoint can help uh, with cloud security and uh, uh, visibility in a cloud infrastructure. So before we start, let me remind you that this session is recorded, as it was mentioned when you join this session and later on. This way we can just share it later, we can just share this webinar and we can offer it on demand for those who couldn't make it today. Now, about today's agenda. So throughout this session, we're gonna cover the current landscape of cloud security to later move on to the consequences of lack of, uh, lack of visibility in cloud environments then I will explain some of the benefits of uh, Lockpoint's ConvertSIM, our security operations platform. And after that, my colleague Adrian will give you a demo on how to use ConvertSIM for cloud security. Finally, at the end of the demo, we will also be taking questions during our Q&A. And if you come up with questions during the presentation, please don't wait until the end. I encourage you to use the Q&A feature to drop your questions along uh, along the way and um, we will go through all of them at the end of this session all right and now we far without further ado all right let's start this webinar so before we delve into the consequences of lack of visibility i think it's important that we talked about today's picture of infrastructure and cloud security so we can understand the importance of high visibility in cloud environments as organizations are moving to cloud uh, services or are, yeah exactly as organizations are moving to cloud services to store their sensitive data the investment from it on the public cloud is increasing exponentially uh, all the way to up to 51% by 25 according to Gartner. This also leads to a, a larger number of attacks from cloud native malware. They see an opportunity and they take it, right? And according to Lockpoint security research, uh, we predict that uh, in the uh, that uh, the emerging uh, that in 2024 malware and APTs or advanced persistent threats um will continue to to target more cloud services you can find all this information in our end of the year report on emerging threats uh, you can find it in our blog uh, on lockpoint.com slash blog and in addition to this i would like to mention that the growth of cloud infrastructure comes with some challenges first a larger attack surface with more entry points we also witness more complexity in infrastructure, especially with the fragmentation of data sources. And I will mention this a bit later as well. And also we can just mention that some uh, cloud providers don't always provide the level of granularity in their data. So it, this doesn't make it easier for, for to run proper investigations by analysts and it creates blind spots. On top of that, we need to add to the mix the lack of skilled professionals, especially in cloud security. And this is becoming a, a shortage in, in, in experts in uh, cloud security. So with this, we get an ominous picture for, for cybersecurity in general for organizations. With this in mind, one can wonder what the consequences of lack of visibility are, right? So first, the storage of sensitive data in, in cloud comes with an underbelly of uh, potential vulnerabilities and that can be actively exploited and is actively exploited by ransomware groups. And the worst part is to detect them, right? The lack of visibility is uh, comes as a consequence of what I mentioned before, data fragmentation. 
cloud environments consist of a multitude of data sources and they need to be monitored. But this only gets more complex uh, uh, with each new application. So each new application in the cloud environment will create more complexity uh, and will fragment the data sources even more. So this in turn makes it more difficult to identify normal and discern it from suspicious activity. Another consequence is the cost of log ingestion, right? Especially from cloud sources. And many security providers charge per volume of data. So what many companies do in order to re reduce cost is that they only ingest those logs that they believe are necessary. But this leaves several gaps along the way. And this lack of visibility is obviously exploited by these ransomware gangs and groups. Uh, but that's not the only concern of IT security professionals, right? Lack of visibility leads to a lack of ability to detect poor application performance, namely resource utilization, network congestion, or applications that are not integrating properly. And eventually not being able to see what's going on in your cloud environments is concerning from a compliance point of view. So the most important is to be able to centralize your data monitoring by ingesting and parsing all logs under the same taxonomy. So that way is easier to identify them, including the ones from cloud environments. And that's where Lockpoint comes into. Lockpoint's convert team is an end-to-end -end security operations platform as it covers the whole TDIR process from detection to investigation to response and remediation. It provides high visibility over the whole IT infrastructure to detect incidents of all sorts. It automatically enriches alerts with threat intelligence, business context, and entity risk for better investigation. And it also comes with several playbooks to automatically investigate incidents and respond to them. As a consolidated platform, SIM, SOAR, endpoint agents, threat intelligence feeds, they're all integrated with each other. So it doesn't require maintenance. Convert SIM comes with out of the box compliance dashboards, alerts, and reporting capabilities thanks to the consistent taxonomy. This way, when uh, as we own our own taxonomy, we can parse uh, those logs that are ingested, so we can just categorize them in the, when we store those events. On top of that, with more than 800 log sources integrations, Lockpoint Convert Sim can collect logs from cloud providers. In this way, we can reduce opaqueness and expand cloud visibility. And this is exactly what we are going to show you now. So now it's time for what you all were waiting for. My colleague Adrian is going to give you a demo on how to lose, how to use Lockpoint Convert Sim for cloud security. So I pass it on to you, Adrian. Let me stop sharing. Now the Thank stage. Thank you very much. The stage is mine. All right. Thank you, Sergio. So good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon, depending on. Uh, where you are located on our beautiful planet. Um, so my name is Adrien de Bocher and I'm a, a sales engineer uh, at Lockpoint based in France. Um, so today I will show you how Lockpoint can increase your visibility uh, on cloud environments and in, improve your security posture. Uh, so how Lockpoint can collect, gather data from uh, logs or events or alerts from security uh, cloud environments and get actually valuable information, valuable insights from these logs. Uh, and I will focus on one specific data source uh, today. Uh, it's going to be Microsoft Entry ID. Uh, so Entry ID, which was previously known as uh, Azure Active Directory. So it's an identity and access management platform. And if you are using uh, any Microsoft uh, Cloud product, you are also using uh, Microsoft Entry ID. So whether it's Microsoft 365, Office 365, uh, Microsoft uh, Dynamics CRM, you will also be using uh, Microsoft Entry ID. Uh, and actually you can also use it as an identity provider for other non-Microsoft uh, Cloud services like uh, AWS, Salesforce, or any uh, supported cloud services. So 
Now, to go into the product. So how Lockpoint can first gather uh, entra ID uh, data. So we will see how to collect not audit logs, not everything that is happening on uh, entra ID or, or Microsoft 365 on SharePoint on OneDrive, etc. because we do have an existing integration uh, Microsoft 365 integration, but it's not the subject of um, today's uh, demo. Today's demo will be about um, alerts and incidents related to threat detection, suspicious activities on Microsoft um, Entra ID. And so we will be using uh, a really common way of fetching logs from uh, cloud sources using REST API. So as soon as the source is providing REST APIs. You will be using the universal REST API fetcher in Lockpoint, uh, whether using it from scratch, if it's a custom source, but if it's a, a common source, you will be able to rely on uh, templates provided by Lockpoint. So here I will use the Microsoft Graph uh, template uh, that is not yet public. So for those of you that are customers or partners, uh, it's not yet released. It will be released soon. So it's a bit of a sneak peek uh, this morning. Um, so the Microsoft Graph template is leveraging the universal REST API fetcher, but everything has been pre-configured. Well, most of it has been uh, pre-configured. Uh, so if we take a look at, at uh, what's needed to add a new data source in Lockpoint uh, using REST APIs, you will have to declare a source. Basically, it's a name, it's a base URL, so it's the root URL of additional endpoints that we will see in a, in a few seconds. Um, and you will have to configure uh, the interval that will be used by the fetcher. Here, it's pre-configured at five minutes, so it means that every five minutes, the sim will fetch the new the new logs. Uh, don't be too aggressive because uh, you can be throttled and then banned by Microsoft. Uh, it can happen. Uh, so five minutes is, is a sweet spot. Uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be throttled if you use five minutes. Then we have the connector tab. So the connector tab is about uh, authentication and authorization. Microsoft is, of course, using uh, a really common and secure way of uh, authentication called uh, OAuth2. Our fetcher supports other authentication methods, of course. Um, so with OAuth2, you will have to supply uh, a token URL. Uh, well, here it's predefined, so you don't have to supply anything. It has already been configured. You will just have to substitute this part with your actual tenant ID uh, and your client ID and client secrets. So you will have to create a, a specific integration on the Microsoft side of thing that will give you a client ID and a client secret that are uh, specific to you, uh, of course, and that you will have to enter here. And then you shouldn't change anything uh, further down except the enable proxy toggle. So if the SIM needs to go through uh, an HTTP or HTTPS proxy to, to talk with the internet, uh, of course, you can do that here. Then uh, many endpoints have been declared. The endpoints are the URLs uh, that will uh, be accessed, fetched by the SIM to get actual events. Uh, and here we have pre-configured uh, most of interesting ones. Uh, from uh, Microsoft Graph and Entry ID more specifically. So to, to fetch alerts, incidents, some audit logs uh, related to directory and sign-ins, uh, like uh, successful logins and failed logins, but also risk detection and risky users coming from um, Entry ID. So this is about fetching the data. Then we have to store it into the SIM so we can declare or we can configure where, where to store it inside the SIM. So in which repository uh, we can um, we want to store these logs. How are we going to normalize to, to parse these logs? As most of uh, cloud data sources, it's going to be JSON formatted. So here we'll be using the generic JSON compiled normalizer. And if you want to enrich 
these logs, you can, of course, select an enrichment policy like threat intelligence so that uh, all the logs, all the events will be matched with uh, the same threat intelligence database with uh, threat fields and IOCs. So this is where you set up the data collection, so the, the data fetching. Once it's inside the SIM, um, it's going to look like this. Uh, so we have data, we have something uh, in the search interface. We can feel that uh, we have interesting events in the event category field, which are, if you know MITRE ATT&CK, these are MITRE ATT&CK tactics. So they should be related to threats, to suspicious activities. But the search interface is really good for threat hunting or for in-depth investigation. But what if we want to visualize actually this data uh, easily? Then we won't be using the search interface. We will be using interactive dashboards or what we call search templates in the lockpoint language. And here, as you can see, we have a search template a predefined search template around um, user suspicious activities, like unusual login activity. So we, there are two users, Joe and, and Ed, uh, that had an unusual login activity. And if I take a look behind each widget, uh, we can see the logic of the, this KPI of this widget. Uh, so here, what do we consider, consider as unusual? It's if there are at least five failed logins followed by a successful one. Uh, usually if there are more than or at several failed logins followed by a successful one, it's quite unusual and it might indicate of a successful brute force attack. So it's something to, to monitor. Uh, of course, in the failed user authentication widget here, so it's a tree map visualization. Uh, and we can see Ed and Joe once again, of course, uh, because they are here. So they, they are fade logins related to these uh, users. And what's uh, powerful with um, the tree map visualization is that it works on multiple levels. Like if I click on Edward, I can see the reasons of the fade logins. So because it, well, it's a good start to know about fade logins, but why? And we can see that it was because of uh, invalid uh, username or password. And also uh, this one uh, password doesn't exist in the directory for this user is also related to invalid um, password. This one is also interesting. Uh, it was a login from a device, an abnormal device uh, that was not supported, that is not supported by the conditional access policy on ID. And just below, we have um, a heat map view, uh, which is a really good way to visualize multidimensional data. And here it's still user centric at the bottom, but we also have the name of the uh, Office Microsoft 365 application and the suspicious activity. So it's three dimensions. So it's not 3D, but kind of 3D without the 3D glasses. Um, and we can see that Sanjay. Uh, has a lot of suspicious activities over different uh, applications. So it may be a good uh, opportunity to find more about Sanjay. Another tab of this um, search template uh, to visualize suspicious activities from entry ID, so login from malicious IP addresses. So at, uh, IP addresses that have been tagged by Microsoft uh, for being malicious, impossible travel, so authentication events from uh, the same account, but from different uh, geographical locations in a small amount of time. So it's physically impossible to, to travel <laughs> even at, at the speed of light. Logins using leaked credentials. So really interesting uh, KPI here. Uh, and anonymous IP address usage. Uh, most of the time it's connections from anonymous uh, proxies. So here I'm able to visualize the data that has been collected. Uh, of course I can change, and this is one of the advantage of uh, search template. I can change the time range. So if I can, I want to see the last hour, the last 30 days, or even 
from a sparse, in a specific period of time. Um, if you are keeping these logs for one year, you can go back one year ago if you want for in-depth investigation. And here, so I'm able to visualize things. Now we can see that we have a, a login from Maria uh, using leaked credentials. So I guess it's not exactly Maria behind this login. Uh, and the risk state here is confirmed compromise. So it might be a good idea to create an incident here directly from this widget. So you can create an incident to then uh, start an investigation and document the investigation. Uh, or instead of creating incident on demand, you can just create an alert, which uh, will behind the scene will create an alert rule so that the SIM will always monitor this specific um, threat and create automatically an incident when there is something fishy happening. So alert rules are objects uh, that are part of the SIM, of, of course, by default. Here, I'm filtering on only alert rules related to intra ID because we have uh, more than 1,000 alert rules by default inside the SIM. Uh, so of course, I won't uh, go into all, th all of these. So we have out of the box, or we will have in the near future, out of the box, um, entry ID, alert rules. And if I take a look at the one related to leaked credentials, we can see that an alert rule is a search query that will be run at a regular interval. And as soon as it, at, uh, as it finds any data, it will create an incident. This incident, will be tagged with MITRE ATT&CK metadata. So this one leaked credentials mean valid accounts. So uh, the alert is tagged with MITRE ATT&CK data, metadata. And so the incidents will also be tagged with MITRE ATT&CK metadata so that you will be able to create the incidents based on MITRE ATT&CK or visualize or report on these incidents based on MITRE ATT&CK. One thing also is um, that the incidents can provide an aggregated view uh, on what's in the incident instead of just providing the raw logs as part of the incident body, uh, we can define an aggregated view. And I will show you an example by moving to the incident management interface here. Uh, so here I'm in the incidents uh, page. Once again, filtering on only intra ID incidents. Of course, I can filter based on a risk level. I can filter based on MITRE ATT&CK metadata, tactic, techniques. Um, and here we can see our uh, preferred uh, incident and uh, suspicious activities, so leaked credentials that has been tagged with a tactic, with a technique. And if I click on incident data, we can see the result. Uh, of the templates that we just saw before. So we can see once again that Maria, uh, well, the Maria's account has been uh, used and it looks like it has been leaked. Uh, so that it, I don't think it's Maria behind the scene that is uh, logging in right now. So this is the incident management interface. Uh, so you can use it to start an investigation, uh, to comment on your investigation. And it's also um, the starting point for the SOAR because here we are at the detection level, the incident management level. It's out of scope for uh, today's demonstration. So I won't go into the response side of thing, but the incident will be the starting point for maybe a playbook for, and in that specific case, it would be a good idea to enforce a password change of this account, to log this account, to enforce uh, MFA or a higher security method to authenticate. So to reduce the risk, to mitigate the risk automatically or on demand. And this is what you can do with the SOAR. Uh, but once again, it's, it's out of scope for uh, today's demonstration. So we saw data collection, visualization, detection. You can also, of course, do reporting uh, with the SIM. So reporting is done through uh, the, this interface, reporting feature, uh, reporting um, yeah, feature. 
So reports are generated by the SIM. They can, of course, be sent by email. So we support uh, different formats, as you can see here, PDF, HTML, uh, Excel, so X, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, CSV. Um, and if we look at a report, so this is a, a report using the default um, lock point template. Of course, you can have your own with your own logo. And it's some KPIs like the search templates that we saw before that are uh, aggregated into reports as you want. You can add any information that you want. You can also uh, change the, um, the way it's displayed, the layout. So you can add paragraphs, you can add charts, pie charts, histograms, etc. So it's it's really powerful to for communication purposes. So if, if you have to report on uh, progress or, or on the security monitoring, threat management from cloud environments. Uh, you can, of course, connect to the SIM or receive automatically in your inbox uh, lock point reports. It's usually, usually easier to receive reports uh, automatically in the inbox. That's what is, that was it, sorry, for me uh, for uh, today's webinar. Uh, so I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A uh, section here in Zoom. And over to you, Sergio. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, and thank you for this demo. And um, what a great way of showing what Lockpoint can do, definitely. So let me share my screen. Um, we just reached our Q&A session. Let me remind you again, as Adrian said, please use the Q&A feature on the lower side of your screen if you want to submit your question. Um, so let me see, we have some questions in place. To start with, it feels like, yes, we have two questions. First one is, does Lockpoint support other cloud providers other than Microsoft? as the demo uh, was focusing uh, uh, mostly on, on Microsoft. Sure, yeah, yeah, of, of course. Yeah. yeah, so of course, the, the, here I just talked about uh, Microsoft uh, and a subset of Microsoft data sources. Uh, but of course, we do have integrate out of the box integrations uh, with other cloud providers, uh, public like American providers, like AWS, uh, Google Cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud. Uh, so yes, we we, we are not uh, only integrated with Microsoft. We can, of course, support other uh, cloud providers to collect data from these uh, environments. Thanks. Uh, what else? Also, another user asked if Lockpoint can be deployed in the cloud. Yeah, of, yes, <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, yes, in terms of deployment, because cloud can mean data sources. And if you are a cloud first company or you are using more and more uh, cloud environments, it could be a good idea to deploy the full log point platform or part of it into uh, the cloud. So, of course, we can do that, or you can do that. You can have a log point deployed on your uh, managed cloud infrastructure. So it's like an on-prem deployment, except you are managing lock point on cloud environments. And for that, we have a, uh, cloud images for uh, the, the, bigger, the biggest uh, cloud providers. So you can deploy lock point as if it was on-prem, but on your uh, own managed cloud provider. Or you have an alternative if, if you don't want to manage uh, the, the lock point infrastructure, you can use Lockpoint SaaS, which is uh, all uh, Lockpoint features, except it's managed by us and you are a user of the of the SIM without having to uh, to manage anything uh, related to uh, operational monitoring or patches, etc. So yes, you can do that, of course, and you have different options. Also, someone asked, do you have a partner portal for training and certification? And the answer is uh, yes. So we, we do have a, a partner portal um, 
but it's not about training. <laughs> so there are two questions. So we do have a partner, a partner portal for uh, uh, technical knowledge, uh, documentation, training and certifications uh, are a discussion with your um, sales representative. Uh, so it's not on the partner portal. Yes. And also we are uh, we are working on our Lockpoint Academy where you can just find as well all the training and certifications and uh, and as Adria mentioned, uh, you can always reach out to your sales representative and they can just also uh, uh, try to find the one that cater your needs depending on whether you are working with multi tenancy or whether you are working uh, with uh, automation and re uh, automated response or automated investigation, basically SOAR, or, or you just want to have a more general knowledge of, of conversion. Um, it seems like there is no more questions. Um, so in that case, we have reached uh, the end of our webinar. Thank you very much for all your questions. Uh, I would like to emphasize that during the last months, we have been running other webinars based on use cases such as compliance, ransomware, data exfiltration, and threat hunting, and well today, infrastructure and cloud security. If you, learn, if you want to learn more and watch these webinars, you can do that. You can do so by going to lockpoint.com slash webinars. Also, let me remind you that on the 11th of April, we are hosting another webinar about endpoint automated investigation and response. We have tons of other uh, resources in the form of product tour, videos, uh, articles, um, and also reach out to your sales representative if you're not a customer yet. And if you're a customer, you can reach out to customer success as well. And um, well, that's all for today. Again, thank you very much for joining this session on infrastructure and cloud security. As always, it's been a pleasure. And then until the next time, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.